going to share his story about how he came to faith in Christ. First question, Kyle, what's your spiritual background? What was life like growing up? Yeah, uh, so I grew up in what I would call just a non-spiritual home. So my family, we never talked about Jesus, we never talked about religion, never talked about spirituality. We just kind of lived our lives. So really, all the way up until the point I was 17 years old, I never really thought about Jesus um, or anything about him. I'd been to church maybe five times in my whole life. Um, and each time I went, I was like, man, this is weird and alienating. And I didn't understand it when people rose their hands in worship. Um, it really freaked me out because nobody told me what they were doing. Um, but yeah, that, that was really my, my spiritual background was one of just not caring, not knowing, and yeah, not really thinking about anything. So. so how did you come to faith in Christ? What was that like? Yeah, when I was uh, 17 years old, I was invited to an event called Wasted Youth, and it's over at Martin High School. Anybody go to Martin here? Nobody went to Martin? Oh, Gary did. There you go. You didn't go to Martin. <laughs> oh, sweet. Wait. Um, yeah, anyway, it was an event called Wasted Youth over at Martin High School. It's like 10 minutes from here, and it was a big auditorium, kind of a setting like this. Um, and I remember I went in there, and I sat down in a chair, and a big screen turned on in the front. It was a big projector screen, and there was a video of seniors kind of saying who God was to them. So these are my peers. I was a senior at the time. And they were saying, God's my Savior, God's my friend, God's my Father, God's my everything. Um, and I had heard stuff like this before, but it, it didn't mean anything to me. Um, and then... About five students came up on stage and started doing what I'm doing right now and just sharing, this is how I came to faith in Christ. This is how Jesus changed my life. This is how I chose to follow him. And I didn't pay attention for the first four. Um, but then the fifth guy came up and he started sharing this story. And it was this really dramatic story. He's a 17 year old kid just like me. He talked about how he was dealing drugs and doing drugs and sex and parties and fights and depression and pills and all this stuff. And I was like, man, this is messed up. Um, <laughs> But then he talked about, he grew up in church a little bit, and he talked about how one night he was in his room, and he knew the gospel, he knew the story of Jesus, and he said, I can't do this anymore. I've tried everything the world has to offer, and I cannot do it on my own anymore. Jesus, I want to give my life to you, and I want to be saved. And I remember when he said the word saved, it was like a, like a light bulb went off for me, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> like, I don't know what that means. I've never heard that word in that context before. Like, what is saved? How do I get saved? Obviously, you're different. You have to understand, I grew up seeing kids that went to youth group but then talked about partying all week or just cussed all the time or talked about girls and all this kind of stuff. So, like, obviously, there's a, there's a disconnect here, but this guy has something different. And then he shared the gospel, and he shared how even though I screwed up and because I sinned, and my relationship with God was broken, our relationship with God was broken, that he loved me so much that he came down to this earth and lived a perfect life, a life that I couldn't live and that you couldn't live, and that he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins, and then not only do that, but he rose on the third day, conquering sin and conquering death. And he says, if you want to have a relationship with me, you can have that forever if you turn from your sin and choose to follow me and make me your Lord. And so I chose to follow Jesus and give my life to Christ. It was November 9th, 2011. It's coming up on 10 years. Um, but yeah, praise God. God. Last question, Kyle. What is a word of encouragement you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah, my, my word of encouragement, like I said, I, I got saved um, kind of in a setting like this. Uh, I, was, I was sitting in a crowd of people and someone was talking. And so I don't know how you came in tonight, whether you're on the fence of following Jesus, or maybe you don't believe in him at all. Um, but I just want to encourage you that tonight could be the night that you give your life to Christ. Um, and I just want to say, like, man, you may say, like, Kyle, you don't know anything about, you don't know what I've done, you don't know what I, what I drink, what I smoke, what I look at on my phone, what, like, the depressive thoughts that I have, my family, my background, anything like that. And I, I'll say I don't know that probably, but Jesus does, and he still loves you, and he loved you enough to die on the cross for you. So I just want to ask you a question, the same question that, that was asked of me almost 10 years ago, and I just want you to think about it as, as, as Shane comes up and speaks after worshiping tonight. He asked me, what's holding you back from giving your life to Christ? And I, I couldn't answer that question. So tonight, I just want to encourage you with that. Just think about that. What's holding you back from giving your life to Christ? Love you all.